to share with you that this is not for everyone. My story is an emotional one of triumph over PTSD and anxiety and panic disorder. I just wanted you to know this before you watch. Everyone, and welcome to Heart to Heart. Today I'm going to share with you a very vulnerable part of my life and I'm going to share with you my journey through anxiety and panic attacks. I did this video about four years ago and I thought it's time to share with you once more about my life and the panic attacks and the anxiety that took over two and a half years of my life. I went through something that was very traumatic emotionally and through the months that passed I was getting worse and worse. Multiple trips to the ER and many times thinking that I was dying. I didn't understand what was wrong with me. Why would my heart race? Why would I feel like I'm going to faint? Why was I feel like I was going to die? The anxiety got so bad that I didn't want to leave my home. I didn't want to be in public. I didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to hear loud noises. I didn't correlate the PTSD that I suffered with the anxiety, but it was many months later and when the healing process began was when I realized my full story. So many times I went to the ER and they would tell me that it's this or that and it got so bad where I couldn't even eat. I couldn't even drink water. Every time I would eat I felt sick. I became weaker and weaker and I lost a hundred pounds. I lost the hair on my head. I was My hair was falling out. I was a nervous wreck. The old school words would be a nervous breakdown. But I didn't know why. I didn't understand it. I've had the flashbacks and I've had all of that and I had some struggles in my life but I didn't understand what was happening to me. Nobody sat down and nobody explained to me that it was anxiety disorder and panic attacks. At that time in my life I didn't have the computer and I didn't know anybody who was going through this and it was something silently I was dealing with even though it was starting to show in the outwardness of me. I was embarrassed by it. I was ashamed. I thought, what in the world is wrong with me? It was a lonely, lonely life. When the panic attacks would happen in the middle of the night, I suffered alone. I didn't want to live one more day. And there came to be a point in my life when I was taking a shower. I just screamed out to God and said, God, please just take my life. I don't want to live one more day. I didn't want to live with the suffering that I dealt with. Panic attacks are severe, and they are something that you feel. You feel like you're going to die. You feel like you have no life. You just want it to be over with. But I knew that there had to be a better way. I knew there had to be something different. My life was filled with turmoil. I lost the most important people in my life all within that year. I lost people that meant the world to me. And then there was the trauma of it all and the fighting and the bickering and the stealing of the funds of the inheritance. Oh, it was so much. But it was so much more. I suffered PTSD from my childhood and everything came on at once. When it rains, it pours, like my mama would say. Everything came upon me at once and I was a nervous wreck. I could barely function. So finally, after the fourth ER trip, I said to the doctor, is this anxiety? And he said it is. Why nobody even said anything to me about it. They would just hand me pills and send me on my way. I took Zoloft for the first year. It really didn't do much other than made me feel like a zombie. I want you to understand I'm not against medication because in life sometimes that's all we have. But I'm going to share with you my journey and it's my journey only. It's everyone's journey is different and I'm going to share with you my struggles and my survival and maybe there is something one thing that you can take from all of this and that you can glean the wisdom and learn something from it if not maybe you'll just understand my story the panic attacks kept coming and coming in fact it it got worse the panic attacks kept happening closer and closer and closer together and it was getting to the point where it was every hour on the hour. It was hell on earth. You've never heard me say such strong words. I don't say words like that. But it was a living hell. I didn't know what to do. 
my life was full of negativity in that time. My life, everything around me was negative. The people around me were doing things that were so negative and I was such a kind spirit and it just destroyed my spirit. Things in my childhood then came up, of course, that's what happens. When you have PTSD, you relive the things over and over again. That didn't help my anxiety. I relived things of my childhood that seemed like yesterday, and they were 40, 40 years ago. In 2010, after the, I don't know, maybe it was the fifth time at the ER, and I asked him, I said, is this anxiety? And they finally told me what it was. They handed me a bunch of pills, and two of these bottles I keep with me. I keep these bottles with me. They are written out in 2010. I never took one pill out of each of these bottles. Not a one pill. I remember driving home that day. And I was by myself, and I cried out to God. I pulled the window down. It was a beautiful sunny day. And I yelled to God. The thoughts were, why don't you just drive into the ditch? How much longer can you take of this? And out of utter desperation, I pulled my window down and I screamed out to God and I, I begged him to help me find the answers to my problems. That started me on a path that was the hardest years of my life. No, it wasn't a miraculous overnight. I'm, back and I'm better than ever. It was years of work. But I realized for me the medication was only just trying to put a band-aid on a gaping hole in my heart. And I realized for me medication wasn't the answer. I took medication, yes, in the beginning to help me because I was to the point where I couldn't function. But I realized in life that I needed to find out what was wrong. I needed to go and dig deep into the core of my being and boy was it a struggle through my panic attacks I started realizing things in my life I started realizing my negativity and the way my thought process was was helping to create my condition and while people did things to me my victimness was creating a world that I was living in and I realized in life that we have to be victorious and put away the victimness of our lives in order to gain strength for ourselves. I learned to forgive those who abused me. I learned to love myself for who I was. I learned to realize through grief of losing a loved one I realized that through that grief, I can become victorious through it. I realized that bitterness is never going to get you anywhere. It's only going to destroy your soul. There was just enough of me that loved myself enough that I wanted to dig out of the hole that I was in. My childlikeness today is because I'm so utterly grateful and thankful that God has helped me through this time of sadness and sorrow in my life. I'm going to show you a demonstration of what I started doing in my life. An onion. It's your typical onion. But did you know that our souls and our spirit is like an onion? What is it like an onion? How many layers are in an onion? As we cut away the layers, we cut away the layers, we get to the core of our onion. We get to the core of our life. We keep peeling and peeling and peeling away. And soon it's our flesh. And soon you see your spirit. Every time you think about your life, remember the onion and how we all have so many skins and so many layers that we have to peel away. 
Everybody through this world has baggage. Everybody carries baggage in their life. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your age. There's always a certain amount of baggage that we carry in our life. And I realized my thought process and my negativity and my feeling of vulnerableness had created a baggage in my life. I felt like in my life I had no voice. I didn't have a voice. There was things in my life, in my childhood, that were done to me that were traumatic. And I couldn't do anything about it. I didn't have a voice. I didn't have the courage. I couldn't do anything. But as an adult, I kept that mentality in my life. As an adult, I kept that. Like, I can't do anything about myself. I can't help myself. I can't pull myself out of it. I I'm just this way. This is how I will be always. But we have a choice when we're adults. The things that happen to us as children, we can't help. But in life, as we grow older, we can make a difference. Go into airing out dirty laundry. That's not what it's about. You don't need to know what I suffered. Just know I suffered. I suffered dearly. You don't need to know what happened in my life. But you do need to know how I pulled myself out of it. And how I pulled myself out of it was because of God. Some of you will shut that video off just like that when I say the word God. Because you're angry at God right now. I understand that. I lived through that anger and that bitterness. If God, you're so good, why are you allowing things to happen? If God, you're so good, why are you letting things happen to people? I was angry. I was. But then I realized that we can become better or we can become bitter. And what better would it be if my story would be a story of triumph? instead of a tr story of defeat. And so I started on a journey. You're pre-designed to have anxiety and panic disorder. It is something that is inherited in a lot of us. It is true that we have to work on it. It is true that there are some things in our lives that are harder. Some people have diabetes. Some people have heart conditions that are hereditary. But that doesn't mean that we have to live with it. And it doesn't mean that we cannot be free from it. You need to look deep into your heart and find out what is bothering you. You need to take and peel the layers of onion. And if there's bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart, that is the key step in finding happiness and finding health and finding peace in your own life. I always tell you in life, sometimes you have to create the peace that you desire. And yes, where you, how you live your life reflects on what is bothering you inside. I don't know how long this video is going to be. This is going to be my full testimony and story because I want to share all of it at one time. And so I no longer decided I was going to lay in bed and think about all the things that happened to me. I decided I was going to get up and I decided I was going to live again and that took some time. But let me share with you what I know. I am not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist. I'm just me. And I just know the things that I have learned and I'm sharing it with all of you. All right, so now I'm going to share with you in tangible ways what I did to help improve my life. You know, in life, there's always things that we can do to help ourselves. So I did a lot of researching and I realized there's things that I could do. I started really researching how your brain works. I'm about to share with you some things that helped me out some of you would think these are quite strange ideas, but look them up for yourself and research them. I'm going to tell you in tangible ways things you can do today. Now, like I said, some of the things that I use, you need to consult your own doctor because I don't know what medications you're on. I don't know, you know what you're doing in your life, but I'm going to share with you what happened to me. So your brain is like telephone wires. Your brain is made up of all these wires and they have a real thick coating on them. And like telephone wires, if they get mixed up, they, they cross, they, they crisscross and they get mixed up, it can totally change the way you think and behave. And all of your wires have this thick coating on it. Just think of it like electrical wires or telephone wires. And when you have a lot of anxiety and you have a lot of depletion of minerals in your body, 
all of a sudden those wires lose that coating and then they get all jaggy. You know, when you're a nervous wreck, how you're nervous, you shake, you're, you, you all have all these sensations. One thing I learned that really has helped me was vitamin B12 complex. And I take that vitamin B12 complex as a liquid under the tongue. Vitamin B12 holds your vitamin B12 coats those nerve endings. It coats your nerves. When you're under a lot of stress and have a lot of anxiety, you lose a lot of your B complex. You don't want to just take B12, you want to take the full complex because the vitamin Bs work together. That has made a huge difference in my life as far as just helping my nerves and helping them. Also, specifically for panic attacks, your brain cannot think of more than one thing at a time. And so when you're going through your panic attacks and you have that discomfort, what's the first thing you do? The first thing you do when you have anxiety disorder and panic attacks, you're thinking about it. Oh my word, I, I can't breathe, I can't think, I can't breathe, oh I'm shaky, I'm going to faint, I'm going to die, all these things. The more you think about these things, what happens? It is a snowball effect, it goes small and gets bigger, and it just goes over and over and over and over and over again. The constant thinking of the things that you're feeling are creating you a sensation that doesn't need to be there. You are your own worst enemy. You know, it's fight or flight syndrome. We were made, all human beings have the fight and flight syndrome. We're made to that in the face of fear. What do you do? You are to run. And that is something that we all need in life. But what happens when you have anxiety and panic disorder, all of these things make it go haywire. And it's like you're panicking over hearing a fire siren. I would have anxiety and panic attacks whenever I heard a fire siren. I was sure it was one of my children. It was fear. Fear is not of God. And so I learned all these things. And so magnesium, I would take Epsom salt baths because magnesium, you can get it through your skin. Magnesium, if you don't have enough of magnesium in your body, these things can happen. But first you have to find out if you can take these things, if you can take these things with the medication you're on and things like that. But for me, I wasn't on any medication. I chose not to take it. And I had taken Zoloft for about a year and I slowly took myself off of that. I hated it. I hated it. Another thing I want to share with you, right brain and left brain. If I'm wrong in some of the things I say, please forgive me. Like I said, I am not a doctor, but I'm saying with things that helped me. And these are things that are proven on the internet. You can, you can research them all you want. You take your right hand, take your left leg, and just slowly pinch it while you're having an anxiety attack. You don't hurt yourself, you just, the sensation of your right hand to your left leg switches your brain and it helps you with that uh, anxiety disorder. Right, right hand, left hand, go, tapping. Tapping is another thing that is amazing. You tap back and forth while you're feeling that you're having an anxiety panic attack. These, and focus on that. I did a lot of meditation. I would focus on scripture. Because I am a Christian, I would focus on the Bible and scripture. I would focus on things. I often would focus that I am laying at a beach and I would focus on the waves and feeling the waves. I would count to 10 backwards. 10, nine, eight. And I would focus on peaceful scenery, peaceful things in my life. Every time I had an anxiety and panic attack, I would wanna be alone. I couldn't be around people because I was afraid people would see it. I was afraid people what they would think of it. And so I would just go somewhere alone and focus on it. What happens with your brain is your brain is a wonderful thing and it doesn't forget. And what happens with panic and, and anxiety disorders, once you conquer a certain symptom, that symptom will change into another symptom. So maybe you're short of breath in the beginning. All of a sudden, you don't have that symptom anymore, and you have the shakes. Oh, the chills, the shakes, the teeth chattering. I can never forget those feelings. And then slowly that goes away. And then you have the feelings of your legs. They feel like they're going to give out from under you. And slowly those symptoms go away. But what happens with your brain is the longer it takes for you to have an anxiety attack, the longer it is for one to happen. And so if you can go a month without one, 
then two months without one, then three months without one, you're so much better. And so you focus on these things, you focus on your mind, you're still going to get them in the beginning, but once you realize what it is, focus your mind on something else. Another thing that was helpful is um, lighting a candle and focusing on the candle, focusing on peaceful things. One person that, oh, just condemned me so much about saying about my environment and how that makes no difference. That is the number one attitude of somebody who will never be helped because they already have in their mind that it's not going to help. And that is so sad because my oil lanterns, my lifestyle, playing peaceful music, playing nature sounds, getting rid of all the negativity that I possibly could in my life, all of those things helped change my life. You can't live in negativity and deal with this. You have to try to live in positivity. Maybe you're in a situation right now where you can't leave a negative situation. I understand that. There's negative things that happen to us from other people. But what you can do is create somewhere a peaceful environment for yourself that you can go to. I don't care if it's a closet. I don't care if you have a whole house. I don't care if it's sitting in your car by yourself. You create a peaceful environment and play peaceful music and just reflect innerly and just reflect on your emotions and reflect on peace and harmony and read scripture, read things that are peaceful. You will be a different person. You will be. And naysayers are going to say, oh, well, that ain't going to do nothing. Oh, you can't do nothing. You know what? It doesn't hurt to try now, does it? And those same people who don't want to try are the same people that will never live a positive life and they will never live a life free of anxiety because they chose not to. And while you're on your medication and you're still feeling the anxiety because once you're on the medication, that doesn't cure you. That doesn't cure it. You still have anxiety in your life. It just helps ease it. You stay on that. You stay on your medication till you think the time is right for you to work with a doctor and try to change your thinking. And I mean, try to change your, you stay on that until you work with a doctor and, and be able to change some things in your life. It doesn't happen overnight. It is the hardest thing you will ever have to do. Let me tell you. Our brains are wired a certain way, but let me tell you, I'm here to tell you, 100% I'm free of it. 100%. That's because I faced my fears. It's hard to face your fears. It's hard to face abuse in your life that you lived at one time. It's hard to face these things. It's hard. I know it's hard, but it will change your life. We only have one life to live. It's worth living. It's worth finding out about yourself and learning and growing. It's my passionate plea. It's the biggest plea of my life is to be a coach and help you and tell you you're going to get better, but you have to put yourself in a place where you can go that way. This is a very strong video. It's a video not for everyone, but this is a video for someone and one person this video is meant for. And I hope that somehow you can take something. A lot of times people will come to me, I can't tell you hundreds of times people come to me and they said they turn my videos on, it helps their anxiety. That is the number one highest compliment I could ever receive in my life because all the pain that I've gone through in my life. I look back now and honest to God, I say that I am thankful I've gone through it. I've gone through a time where I didn't want to live to a time where I'm just so utterly grateful that I went through it because I feel like now my pain is not in vain and that my pain and suffering helps you all. And that is something that I will take with me to my grave. A few of you may say, you know, you speak in riddles, Tessie. You talk about having a troubled childhood, but yet you talk so lovingly about your family. 
You must be just saying these things. <laughs> no, my friends. It's peace that passes all understanding. I have forgiven those that have hurt me. I have forgiven those that have done wrong to me. I realize in life that there are things that happen to us. They're wrong. I'm not a doormat and I don't accept abuse and I don't accept any of that. But I've learned to live with it and I've learned to have peace through it. And I learned that to find pity and to learn from every mistake that somebody else has made. I've learned to learn every, every mistake that I've made. I have learned to forgive. I have learned to forgive. Forgiving is not a noun, it's an adjective. Forgiving is not for the person that you forgive. It's for forgiving is to help you heal. Learn, my friends, to forgive. Or it's to